much should I practice guitar? This is probably the most common question of all time that guitar teachers everywhere are being asked constantly. And for a good reason, it's a good question. We need to figure this out. A student recently left a comment under one of my videos asking a detailed version of this question, and I have a lot to say about it, so I wanna share my answer with you here. The main takeaway might surprise you. I have a tactic that does wonders for keeping us playing consistently and long-term, and the consistent long-term playing and practicing is how the most improvements and enjoyment happens. And at the end, I will share exactly what's working for me right now, exactly how I plan and stick to my own practice goals. So stick around to the end for that. I'm Jared Borkowski from soundguitarlessons.com, where I have courses that help guitarists express themselves more freely through improvisation, fretboard theory, uh, arranging, and much more. If you're new here, welcome. Please follow and subscribe. Let's get into this lesson and get you practicing more consistently than ever. <laughs> Okay, here's what we're gonna cover. I'm gonna read the question that I got from Pat, who left the comment under one of my videos. I will share my multi-pronged answer with a bunch of helpful tips in there. And then I'll share what I'm doing right now that's working for me. And lastly, I will give you an important kind of outlook bonus tip that puts all of this into perspective and it's important, so stick around for that. Okay, so this was a comment from Pat who left it under my uh, scales improvisation video. Uh, super deep scale drills, how to improvise over tunes. What I'm leaning into on my channel is um, deep dive, tactical, actual uh, exercises, things that are not easy to practice. It's not, you know, three simple things. I like doing these talking videos that you can just listen to and kind of get some advice from, but my uh, practice videos are can be sometimes really deep and really intense. So one naturally might start thinking, how am I gonna get this down? I need to show up and practice consistently. Uh, Pat, whose username is David Patrick, but he signed his name Pat, so I'm, I'm calling him Pat. And uh, thanks for leaving the comment, Pat, and uh, he leaves a lot of comments on my videos, so thank you. Uh, he said, thank you, I need to figure out a set amount of time a day to do any of this. Do I just pick a time window, eight to 10, for example, every day, sitting with my guitar? The consistency concept is great, but how do I plot it? The self-discipline basic here is needed. Thank you for your self-discipline to work on these videos, et cetera, and posting them. It is inspiring, but frustrating as I need to get this daily routine thing figured out. Thanks again, Pat. So yes, it is difficult. Uh, there's no way around it. The hard truth is if we want to make big improvements, and especially if we're working on stuff like some of the stuff I talk about, improvisation and jazz guitar, um, there's no way around it. We just have to figure this out. And that's what Pat here is talking about, like, ah, I gotta figure this out. I gotta show up regularly somehow. How can I get it in my life? And I've obsessed about this and tried everything under the sun uh, because I know that a regular schedule, if we can get used to it and make it a habit and show up um, as often as we can and make it that manageable, make it even easy feeling, then we don't have to stress about it anymore. Right, then we can just say, this is a part of my life. This is how I do it. Um, and I'll talk more about that as we get into uh, more of these topics here. So first thing I wanna say is consistency above all else. I did a video a bit ago uh, on something I call the practice priority pyramid. So I will link to that video in the YouTube description, um, or you can go to my YouTube channel and, and search uh, practice priority pyramid. Uh, it's a framework for what to worry about, what to focus on in what order. And right here, I just am emphasizing that the very first thing to worry about and focus on is consistency. Okay, so we want to pace ourselves. We want to um, have it feel like it is just going in this steady way. And if life gets crazy, we want to continue to show up consistently and just do what I call placeholders, the placeholder version, because the barrier to entry the, the surface tension of getting back into something is the hardest, hardest, hardest part of a habit like this, of practicing, of improvement, of exercise, whatever you name it. Uh, if we get away from it completely, getting back in is the hardest part. So staying in is one of the simplest things we can do to uh, help us improve over time. Just staying in. That's why consistency is so important. If we stay inside, 
of the habit, even if we feel like it's ridiculous and we're not doing what we want to do and we're not making progress, uh, by being in there, as soon as we have more room in our life, as soon as we feel a little better or get better from our cold or, you know, as soon as the crazy family, summer vacations over, whatever your situation might be that makes life hard to be kind of routine and consistent, if we can stay in there somehow, then as soon, the day you have more time and you feel better and more energy, you're, you are increasing the quality and maybe the, the time that you're putting into the guitar playing, right? Because you're continuing to show up and touch on it. Now, this everyone has to do this differently in a way that works for us. I will talk about this more uh, later in this episode here, that all of this can be flexible, right? We're just trying to create something that works for us. Um, and that is one of my top tips as much as we can. If we're in a situation where you literally can't touch the guitar, fine. You know, we got to, and, and do you need to take the guitar on vacation? No, not necessarily unless you want to, but don't let it stress you out. Right. But as far as just normal day to day going, even crazy busy life when we're home, uh, we want to keep that consistency going. Um, I will link to all my practice and strategy mindset videos in the description and YouTube here. I have a bunch of videos on this if you want to just soak in more of it. So here is my response. I will read it. Um, because I already wrote it out in the comments, so I might as well read it for you here and then elaborate on it. I said, hi, great question. Thanks for asking. I do a video. I will do a video on this soon so I can help more people with the same problem. Hey, I'm doing that video right now uh, because what you're struggling on is what you're struggling with is very common. Here's my main advice for now, given your question. And number three is the most important. Okay. So we'll start with number one here. A time window is great because Pat asked about eight to 10, for example. So a time window is great if you can stick to it. Um, I have a time window plan, but then I let it shift around if needed. Uh, but I still roughly do my practicing in the same order among other things in my day. So to uh, explain that a little bit, I have it in my calendar. And most of the time I do not do it exactly when I planned to do it in my calendar, but I tend to do it in the order of when I plan to do it. Right. So, uh, if I have other things before other things after, and things just take longer or there's, you know, something comes up, um, I still try to, Oh, my next thing I'm supposed to do when I get a chance is play the guitar. And that could be more or less time or more or less focused or more or less quality, depending on how I'm feeling that day or how much time I have or whatever. So yes, yeah, sticking to a time is great if you can do it. I mean, that, that would be one of the best things to do if you can do it. And everybody's different if you can do it. If you can stick to a time, it will just start to feel normal. And that is definitely what we're trying to go for here. We don't want to spend any energy fighting the practice of practicing. We don't want to fight the habit of practicing. We want to have it feel like it's just in our life. So when we show up, the fighting, the effort, the difficulty, the frustration can be focused on the awesome stuff, the music stuff that we're trying to learn, right? So that takes a lot of energy, willpower, thinking, oh, when do I practice? Uh, how do I organize it? So if we can get this autopilot, then we can show up and have that, oh, how do I do all this stuff can be about what we're trying to learn. And then then we're actually making huge uh, progress. So a couple tips here, if you can do it earlier in the day, definitely it's better. Not for any reason other than it just makes it easier to miss. Um, I, I can practice great quality uh, practice time in the evening uh, and everybody's different in, in that regard too but um, I'm not too tired or anything I'm a, I'm kind of an evening person so I can practice well in the evening but if I plan on that it um, it makes it easier to miss because things come up and days go haywire so planning earlier is just great for the sake of you're much more likely to get it in as early as you can possibly do it and if that means first thing after work that's fine. If that means way later in the day, it's, I just mean as early as possible. So you're less likely to miss it. And there's kind of that saying the best time to exercise is whenever you actually do it. So same with practice, right? The best time to practice is just like whenever, it, whenever you can, whenever you can actually get it in there. Okay. Here's that number three answer. That's the biggest takeaway. It's super important. This will do wonders for all of us to keep us playing. Okay. Here it is. And then I'll read my answer as well. So you hear that. Take what you think you want to practice. Take what you think is ideal for you. Take what you're excited about, what you feel ambitious about. And you're like, ah, yes, I want to practice guitar two hours a day, right? Because that's what Pat said, eight to 10, two hours a day. All of us should take that number of amount, and it could be different for any of us, right? 
Is that half an hour? Is that an hour? Is that two hours? Is that 15 minutes? Take what you think you can do. Take whatever amount of time you think you can practice and then cut it in half and have that be your commitment. That alone has worked for me and the people that I've shared it with uh, more than anything else I've seen. Because we just, it's kind of like your eyes being bigger than your stomach, right? Like, yes, I want to practice. I want to plan on practicing more than I do. I really want to, but by planning on chopping that in half and cutting it down, then it makes me keep doing it. And we already said keeping doing it, staying consistent is that wins over everything else. So we don't want to have some ambitious amount that we do for two weeks and then we can't keep it up. We want something we can keep up indefinitely forever. And of course this can change, but just take your amount, cut it in half and say, that is my commitment. Okay, I have more I can say about it, but let me read my answer so you hear that version as well. So here's the most important piece of advice. Take the amount that you think you want to do every day. In your case, it sounds like that's two hours and cut it in half, then commit to that. If you can do an hour every day, you'll make amazing progress. But if you commit to two and it's a little hard to keep it going because of other life stuff, then we will jeopardize the consistency and you'll be worse off than if you just committed to one hour. By doing half of what you think you want to do, it's much easier to maintain. You can still do it on harder and busier days. You'll feel great having a string of showing up for it. You will resist it less. It will be more fun and you'll solidify the habit better. And important point here, you can always do more than your minimum commitment. Of course you can. This is just a psychological trick to commit to a minimum that is easy and doable. So for me right now, my jazz guitar practice schedule is only an hour a day. I just plan an hour a day. That is my commitment. Uh, then I tell myself that I'll do more if I have time, if I'm inspired. Um, and believe me, my brain really, really wants me to plan more than that. But I just plan for the, the one hour. That's what's in my calendar. That's what I plan on. That's what I show up for. That's what I can do really consistently. And... I've tried planning for way more than that because I'm like, oh, I want to get better at this and better at this and better at this. I have so many, you know, so many things I want to practice. Uh, but then it just becomes this hectic roller coaster of doing it, not doing it, doing it, not doing, changing, slipping from it. So I just focus on the minimum. And by showing up on for that minimum for me, the, the hour, uh, if and when I have time, very often, this happens often, I'll play way more than that. And if I don't have time, I can keep that going on a crazy life schedule, right? So... Half an hour is a great, you know, for the typical busy person who also really cares about playing guitar, half an hour is a great commitment. If you feel like you want to do an hour, cut it down to half an hour. If you feel like you can manage a half an hour, cut it down to 15 minutes. That is, if you practice, actually practice 15 minutes a day for a few years, you'll be playing, you'll be jamming, you'll be playing stuff and you can always do more. It just gets you doing it, right? So it's nice to have this minimum commitment. I'll share what I do in one second. Just one more thought about the consistency. We want to get it to the point where there's like a runner's itch. Like people who run all the time, they get what they call the runner's itch where, you know, they get antsy and need to, to run it off. We will get that if we practice that consistently, any amount that can say, it will feel weird to not do it. And imagine how powerful that is. It feeling weird not to do it. Great. Then it's the momentum is taking care of you. You want to show up and play a little bit and we can worry about the next thing after that. What do we actually want to practice? What, it, what, how quality is our practice? How hard is it? You know, et cetera, what should we focus on? That's part of the practice priority pyramid. Again, check the video out. Um, check that other video out on that. If you want to see, you know, what to focus on next. Here's what I do uh, right now. Okay. Uh, and this can change and I've shared some of it already, but I practice one hour a day of jazz guitar. Okay. One hour seems tiny to me. I'm still kind of brainwashed from going to music school where everyone was uh, kind of competitively trying to practice eight hours a day. So it's silly. One hour seems silly to me. I always wanted to practice at like at least three hours of it a day or something like that. But one hour is like working really well for me right now. I'm actually able to do it. Um, I do have it scheduled in my calendar. I also track it in a habit tracker app where I just check it off each day. So I see a string of days that I did it. Um, and I track it in my calendar too, cause it's already in there. So I kind of might write in there what I practiced. Um, here's an interesting one. If I miss it, I will make up for it. That's the cool thing about the minimum commitment here is that it's minimum enough that I can make up for it, right? So if I do miss a day, uh, if it happens for whatever reason, I like the idea of keeping the it as kind of a quota. 
So the next day, or at some point, I'll make up for it by doing two when I can and say, cool, I kind of did my quota. Uh, that's how I do it. That might be a little intense. That might be a little hardcore uh, if if we don't have room to kind of double it every once in a while. Uh, but like I said, my ideal would be more than an hour. So sometimes I can handle that. And then I just keep keep that string going. And I think of it as a quota. So if I miss one, I kind of fill in and say, oh, I made up for that day. And it's really nice to just feel like this is something I do, you know, all the time. And big, big one that I already said, I do more if I want to. Okay. I played for two hours this morning because I had time to, and I wanted to, but I showed up for my one hour. So last thing I will say is I always, 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 always do a warm up, and I do a very specific warm up, but I always warm up. Um, that's just something I wanted to throw in here. I don't miss that. I don't miss my little warm up uh, exercise, and I'll share uh, what that is for you. Uh, I have a the bonus tip coming to put this all in perspective, but I might as well share with you now. The warm up is. Um, I just called it the best warm up because it's what I use all the time. Uh, but it's just a really great warm up. I have a free PDF of it that you can get. There's a link in the description if you're watching on YouTube, or you can go to soundguitarlessons.com slash warm up, all one word. Um, and it's just tabs and notation of the warm up exercise that I do literally every single day, every time I practice. It takes me about five to 10 minutes, depending on how much I uh, play around with it. And it just does wonders. If I don't do it, I don't feel okay. I don't feel as good. My arm can start to have issues. If I do do it, then everything feels great. So you can get that for free. So you can use my warm up, and I'll send you a little video on uh, how I you know, demonstration of it as well. Okay, here's your bonus tip, kind of a pers perspective shift. I just want to emphasize because I've tried all the ways of practicing, planning, scheduling, uh, everything. All of this is just a construct. Okay. It's just a made up thing that we're trying to do to get us to play music, right? So this might not work for some people. This might not be the right thing for you. Um, I'm pretty kind of organized, structured planning kind of person. So just sharing all this with you in case it's helpful. Any one little nugget from this hopefully maybe can be really helpful for you. It might not all be the right thing, but it's all what I, when I say it's all a construct, I just mean it's all, this is all made up. There's no right or wrong way to do it. Some people thrive on just not worrying about it all. They just pick up the guitar because it's sitting there and they, for years, you know, are are flying and 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 crushing it on their guitar playing. Um, and other people have to do much more of kind of a planning strategy. Connected to this is the fact that you will fall off of it. It will break at some point. It will break down. Life circumstances will change or just some phase will, come. you know, it will not be perfect. It will not stay that way forever. So it's okay to just say, eh, whatever. It was all just a made up thing anyway. Like this is all to be easy on ourselves, right? And not beat ourselves up. Eh, it's just a made up thing anyway to help me to uh, play and, and, and get to my goals and practice and enjoy this process. Uh, so therefore, when it goes awry, we can say, okay, let me just jump back on and try again. And uh, and, and, or change it and try something different way, different way, different way, try something new. Uh, that is something that I definitely do. If it didn't work for me, I usually don't try to just do the exact same plan again. I, I think about why did that fall off? Cause I want a version of this that works for me forever. Why did I fall off of it? Why did I stop playing? Why did that happen to me? What made it hard? Let me tweak the way I'm approaching this a little bit. So I've done this for years and years over time, change it, change it, change it. That's, and like I said, what I've arrived at now is what's working for me for now. One year from now, I might make a video where I share that something's different. So if the amount of practicing and how to structure your practicing is something you're curious about or needed help with, I hope you found something from this video, even one little thing that will be beneficial for you to try. Leave a comment if you're watching on YouTube and let me know if there's something from this that was a big takeaway or something that you are going to try or something that I didn't say that's helpful for you that you can help other people with because people read the comments and that's cool. Thank you so much for watching. Little kind of behind the scenes thing here. I have always done these Mm, kind of talking videos, mindset, ideas, strategy. I, I like this kind of stuff a, a lot, obviously, and I like to talk. A lot of people leave comments on my videos and say, you talk too much. So um, I do try to try to get more to the point when I'm teaching guitar lessons, but also kind of fun to lean into, hey, why not just talk more? Why not do some talking episodes? And what I'm thinking of doing here, and I haven't started it yet, is doing a video like this once a month on the channel, and the other ones will be pretty deep dive, you know, technical, 
uh, drills and actually what to practice on the guitar. So maybe once a month I will be doing a just idea talking uh, video. And since it's perfect for the format, I'll post these as kind of a monthly podcast and then people can just listen to them and not have to watch it on YouTube. But of course it'll be on YouTube as well. So I'm just sharing behind the scenes. If that's, if that sounds cool to you, let me know. Um, and otherwise, you know, that's what I'm going to try for now and see how it goes. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for listening. I hope to see you in another lesson very soon. Take care and happy practicing and happy consistent practicing and practice planning. Mm -hmm.